Payments, a thing that we all need in our lives. Whether you work a nine to five or you're freelancing or you run your own business, you need to get paid. Show me the money! In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Paddle, Webhooks and Next.js all together to create a checkout flow. By the end of the video, you'll understand how Paddle works, how to integrate it with Next.js and then how to use the webhooks. So if, you're, so if you're ready to learn how to use Next.js, webhooks, and Paddle all together, let's get into some code. So to begin with, we need to create our Paddles payments project. So we can just use create next app for this. So MPX create next app, and we'll give it a name. And we're gonna call this Paddle payments. And then we can let that run in. And then we'll open up Visual Studio Code and we can talk about what we're going to do. And then I'm going to give you a quick tour of Paddle. So I've made a quick few modifications to our application. So first I've removed basically everything except from the welcome to Next.js. And I've included a button here that says buy my product. Now the button doesn't actually do anything except from it's been styled with a few styles so that we can see it on screen and it's easier for you guys to see. So that's all we have and we haven't made any modifications, but when we've done our tour of Paddle, we'll come back here and start making some changes. So let's move on and look at Paddle. So I'm at the sandbox version of Paddle, which can be found at sandbox-vendors.paddle.com where you can sign up for a free account and you don't need to go through any verifications, I believe. You can just sign up and get there. So once you've logged in, you'll get dropped into the Paddle dashboard. Now this is the exact replica of what it looks like in production. It tells you your revenue, how many transactions, the average amount, refunds, coupons, etc., and where your top product is, and then obviously where people are buying them. But we only care about a few things today. So we're only gonna care about the catalog, the developer tools, and that's really it. So let's talk about the products first. So the catalog section allows you to essentially set products that you want your users to buy, and it gives you a product ID. Same for subscription plans. With subscription plans, you get a plan ID, and you can set all sorts of interesting features, such as the price, trial periods, how long, each payment lasts and you can also even set your parity pricing so here you can set all the different prices for every single country so for example in usd it's 10 bucks but in europe it's currently 921 but i could say in europe they only have to pay five dollars and so if you live in that country you set this to five click off and then you hit save at the bottom and now anyone that has a European IP address or they select Europe will get charged $5 versus 10. And that's how you can do some of your PPP plans if you need to implement that. Then we need to talk about the actual checkout. So the offering from Paddle allows you to have this kind of checkout with zero code implemented you just basically open it to the page where they have to pay. You can set all sorts of features in here, such as what kind of payment method you want, Google Pay, Apple Pay, Ideal, or PayPal. You can set styles in here, so we can set it to purple, and that will set the purples here. We can set different kinds of transactional options, such as send confirmation evil, even if it's free and subscription, and include a custom message, and in the growth section, you can ask people to opt in to your marketing emails so that you can grow your following lists. So that's the basics of Paddle. I'm not gonna go too much into that because it's not as important as actually just integrating Paddle. So let's talk about how that works. So you're gonna wanna go to authentication under developer tools. When you select that, what you'll see is this section here. Now this is the most important part, the Paddle vendor ID. This vendor ID will map to your account alongside your checkout ID. Now you may be concerned about if I show this on screen, people will be able to use this if this was my production account. So to combat that, in your checkout, you have to request domain approvals. So in Sandbox, this is not required, but when you use production, you have to set all of the domains that you want to be able to launch your account from. So whether that is just 
for example, rollyourtweet.com or app.rollyourtweet.com or staging.rollyourtweet.com. All those kinds of domains have to be included. Now, this is a manual process. So if you're looking to launch into production in, say, two weeks from now, it's best that you ask for your domain approval as soon as possible. It can take three to five business days, although one of mine did take a bit longer. So just make sure that you're prepared to wait for someone to manually review these. So let's talk about how we're going to use this vendor ID. So this vendor ID we have here, 479, will be used in our code. So make sure you copy that down. We're going to create a .env to handle it, but just write this down somewhere or copy and paste it because that's what you're going to need. So we're done in Paddle now. We can go back to our code and start working on that. So the first thing we need to do is create our .env .local. This is going to house the Paddle vendor ID and we need to make sure that we have it somewhere that we can reuse. Even if we deploy, we can just swap it out. So for this, we're going to use next underscore public underscore paddle underscore vendor underscore ID. So you can just do next public underscore paddle underscore vendor underscore ID. And then set that to that number for mine, it's 4759. And then hit save. So now we have this ready to go. We can close these two out and we can create a components folder here. And inside of that components folder is where we're going to store our paddle loader because they don't have an SDK that supports Next.js. So we're just going to use the CDN version and we're going to launch it ourselves. So inside of there, we can create a new file and we'll call it paddle loader.js. And we're going to do all of our work in here. So the good news is, is that Next.js has the ability to launch scripts or load scripts using the next slash script package. So we're going to import script from next slash script. Make sure this is just in quotes. And we're going to use that to create our function. So then we're going to do export function paddle loader. And we're not going to need to pass anything in. Then inside a return statement, we could do script. And then we need the source, which is equal to HTTPS cdn.paddle.com slash paddle slash paddle.js. And that will house the paddle checkout that we need to use. And then all we need to do is pass a few variables to it on load. So we can do on load equals, and then we're going to do a function here that passes in two elements. The first one being, is it in the sandbox environment? And then secondly, that vendor ID that we just talked about. So we can do that by doing onload equals, and then inside of our function here, we do paddle dot, and then we tell it what we need. So this one is environment. So it's environment dot, and then set, and then inside of the set, we just tell it sandbox. And then in production, you don't need this. So you could set this to an environment and then just to pass in if it's sandbox or null or false, true, and then do an if statement. It's up to you how you want to handle that part. And then you can do paddle.setup. And then we're going to pass in side of that vendor. And then what we need to do is actually convert the environment variable from a string to a number. So we can do number. And then inside of that number, we can do process .env dot, and then next pa public paddle underscore vendor underscore ID. And then that will handle all of that for us. And then we just need to close out the script, hit save. And now this is available to use anywhere in your application. So if you have payments on multiple screens or on every screen, then maybe you want to load it in to your app.js. But in our case, we only want payments on a single screen. So we're going to do it inside of here. So you can import paddle loader from dot dot slash components slash paddle loader. And now this is available wherever we need it to be. So now we can use this to essentially drive our checkout experience. So now the last thing to do is actually set something in here. So we're going to 
open up a fragment here and wrap our whole application in it because I want to pass the paddle loader at the beginning of our return statement here. So you can just do paddle loader and close it out. And now paddle is available on the screen so we can use it wherever we need to. So we're going to use it on this button. So I'm gonna hit save here and I'm gonna jump back into Google Chrome and I'm gonna to go to my catalog and choose a subscription plan here. So I'm gonna to go to subscription plan and choose a plan ID. So this is what's going to drive how the checkout opens and what the user sees. So we'll choose plan ID, we'll go back to Visual Studio Code and we'll do the work here. So we're going to do another on click here and inside of that on click, we're going to handle it with a function. Now this function is essentially just going to say paddle.checkout. So we're telling it that we want to check out with paddle. Then we need to open it. So we just set it to open. Then we pass in an object and we're just going to pass in product and then the product ID as a number. Then we're going to hit save. At this point, this is ready to go. So let's go ahead and test this out. So here we are at my Next.js application with a big green button that says buy my product. Now, when you click this button, it's going to launch the paddle loader and it's going to ask you to do certain things such as type in your email address. So we'll just say, this is my email. And then we're going to click continue. Then it's going to ask us where we're located in the world. So we can choose the United States and say zip code is 27529 and click continue. And then it's gonna ask for us to pay. Because I'm on desktop, it's gonna ask me to pay by card or PayPal. You can add a coupon if there was a coupon available. And on the next screen, it's gonna ask for payment method. Now in test mode, you can use the Stripes payment example card. So it's like 4242 um, And that will allow you to pay for the product and go through the full experience. But I'm not going to do that because that part is up for you for testing and however you want to handle that. So now payments actually work and we can go through the full experience and pay for something. But what about after we've paid for something? If you're using a subscription service or you need to send an email or something, you're going to need to be able to use webhooks. Now webhooks are an important part and with Next.js, they're just as easy as writing an API call. But we need to be able to test it out locally before we push this production. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to set up this so that you can still use localhost, but push the thing out to the public so that someone can make a call to your endpoint. So first, let's talk about webhooks and how they work with Paddle. So inside this desktop is where you're going to see everything. Under developer tools, you're going to see this events section. If you select events, it's going to give you a few options. Down here, it's gonna tell you what events to subscribe to. So do I care about creations, updates, cancels, payment success, fail, refunded, all these different kinds of payments. And then you have the option to just be an email or a webhook. So when you deploy this to production or you're doing full testing, you'll need to select these to enable it. But we're gonna use this webhook simulator. When using the webhook simulator, you can choose any of this type of options for an alert and it will simulate to a webhook. So for example, we're going to use subscription created for this demo. So subscription created, you can see all of this data is going to be passed along to our webhook. User ID, subscription ID, status, email, did they consent to marketing, cancel URL, update URL, etc., etc. And it gives you this test URL to use, but you can't use localhost because it doesn't know what that is. So we're going to use one of my favorite projects to do this. So one of my favorite projects is Local Tunnel. It exposes a local port to the outside world and you don't have to mess around with proxies and DNS and firewalls, etc. You may have also seen Ngrok is a good example, but I just prefer this one. It's easier to set up. You just install this package globally and then you can use it wherever you need to by doing LT dash dash port and then the number. So we're gonna use that to expose to our outside world. So we can go back to our terminal here and we can create a new terminal and we can do LT dash dash port and then give it the port that we need, which is 3000. So now we have this URL that we can use and this is going to give us access to the outside world. So if we go ahead and take this now, copy it and drop it in here, what you'll see is this is a, this website's been you know, served via local tunnel. If you click continue, it'll actually give us our application here. 
which is great, so now we can use this to make our API calls. So now we're exposed to the outside world, let's start building out our webhooks. So back inside of Visual Studio Code, under APIs, create a new file, we're gonna call this webhook.js. Now inside of this webhook.js, we're just going to do a really simple example. There are a couple of things that you need to note. This is not a production ready webhook endpoint because I'm not going to verify that the webhook is real. Now there is a package that I will leave in the description that allows you to verify whether or not the webhook comes from Paddle. And I would advise that if you're using any kind of webhooks that you verify they're coming from the correct source, regardless to if it's payments through Stripe or Paddle or anywhere in the world. It's incredibly important that you understand if you don't do this, you could expose yourself to some security concerns. So with that being said, let's do some work. So we're gonna just do the standard handler. In fact, we can copy it out of this hello one. We're going to take this standard handler and drop it in here. But we will make it async because if you were to verify it, you would need to have an async handler. So I'll just put that in there for now. Then right out of the gate to save time, we can do if the request body is not there, we can just return the status. So return res status 401. And we'll do JSON and we'll just say error no request body found. So that's been taken care of. Then we can do if request.body.alert name. And that's the alert name. So for every type of alert, they all have alert underscore name is the key. And then the value depends on that. So for subscription updated, it's subscription created. And then if it is that, we can do console.log and we'll do res.body and we'll do res status 200.json and then we'll just put success true and then make sure we close out this if statement and hit save. So what's happening here is we're saying if there's no request body, just return it immediately. Otherwise, if the alert name equals subscription underscore created, we'll log it out to our console and then we'll return status is true. So if we go back now and go to our developer tools and we paste in the URL that we were using, which you can find in your terminal here, and we can say, I want to copy this drop it in here and do slash API slash webhook. This is where our webhook's going to be. And now we can call the webhook directly and we should get response. And we got a response of 200. And here it tells us everything that was sent and at what time. Now we can use this as the P signature here, the user ID, update URL, unit price, etc. Now this P signature right here is actually what you're going to use to verify whether or not the webhook is actually from Paddle. You can use this alongside the package I'll include to verify that it's actually the correct signature and then allow the webhook to process. Otherwise you can reject it. So there you have it. Paddle, Next.js and webhooks all in a nice neat package. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop it a like comment for the algorithm, and of course, subscribe if you want more web development, Jamstack, or SaaS videos. And until next time, see ya.